Your windshield's in. Look at that. I got some tape on here just to hold it up in the corners. It's in there pretty good, but you never know. But, uh, yeah, you did a good job putting that thing in. Just sealed up nice, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm gonna kill that door shine. I got all the seam seal in here, and this has been dry for a couple days. I kind of just went over this seam where it needed it. A couple extra little spots I thought and kind of look kind of iffy. I got some under here too and I got a floor mat in here now but I think I can put the uh, rear view mirror in is what I'm going to do next so I can see back and up because uh, hey look at that we can put it in now. But uh, I should be able to drop this firewall down now. I'll probably come in and I'll cut this zip ties out too. And then I can uh, maybe put my gas pedal back. That would be useful so I could not drive it with my hand. But yeah, that's a that's a win right now. That is a win. Okay, so I got the gas pedal back in and I got the firewall pulled down. Now I'm gonna probably scrub this up and get the glass remains of throw that rag away immediately when I'm done with it. And then I'm gonna Clean the glass, like below the uh, where the windshield wiper channel is. Clean all the glass out of that, and I can put that trim piece back in and I put the wipers on it. Um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Looking good. All right, I got the top piece on here for the uh, wiper trim, and uh, I got this new antenna in too. Well, I had this all apart. Uh, the old antenna, there was no stud left on that. It was kind of just glued on. So I got the new antenna in, and I got it plumbed through. That one antenna came out of like a 93 or 4, so it's a longer cable, which is good. So that'll help us. And I'm over here, I'm rebuilding the wipers and the wiper arms. They were basically brand new, but just sun faded from sitting. So, and now it's raining. Now it's raining. I love that. Oh, and while I was under here, because to do the antenna, you have to have the inner fender out to get up there. I uh, got the fluid film stuff out in a, a paintbrush, and I kind of brushed in all around and under the fender. All these seams up in here and all of this good stuff. And that uh, speed hole right there, I, I fluid filmed that up too. Yeah, bolts and the brake line. All the good stuff there. So we got that all fluid filmed. That'll be good for the year. Well, it's raining um, a little bit, and we've got no water coming in anywhere around here. I don't see any water in over there. It's kind of just sprinkling. It's not like pouring, but it's kind of misting. And there's no water in the vehicle. Um, got the wipers on, and they work. Motor. Yep, and the intermittent switch works properly. Turn that down. Yep, look at that. Very good, very good. Got our mirror up. So, uh, and it's, I kind of just touched on this stuff and it's nice and hard to the touch now. So that's set and cured perfectly. So we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. She's sealed again. So I took the inner fender off the driver's side as well as the passenger side and I got it all uh, with the fluid film stuff. And then I got the mud flap on this side. I had to use some special hardware there. But hey, it's all, it's all done now. Got this side in. I also got, I, I was short one lug on each tire because they used to have the ones with the caps. I don't like them because they rot. So I got these nice ones that aren't caps. Or don't have the chrome cap, like they're just 
actually what they are. So now they all match. And uh, finally, I haven't had the cluster plugged into it in a while. And now that we got a windshield, I kind of want to take it for a lap here. See how much gas we got in it. I haven't. It's going down below half now. For all pressure gauge works. That's weird. Now we're down a quarter tank. That's really weird. Tack works and everything, no? Huh. What happened to that oil gauge? taper off the windshield um, I did come up here and I primed where I patched that hole kind of crudely it'll this whole chunk will be it, whatever it's fine but uh that black line I did was that was a good call at least for now it doesn't look terrible that obviously negates it a little bit but looks all right and she made her first lap around the old test loop first time in a couple months anyway Let's go with the wipers on. Now it's full on interior work time. Nice. Okay, so we see how we got no oil pressure on this gauge. My dad's down there, he's gonna push up on the connector and you're gonna see the oil pressure gauge come back. He can figure out his flashlight. Yep, he's on the water. Yep, and the gauge is starting to come back. It Hold it. What? Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, it's just the wire's going to the plug in. Yep, look at that. Alright, well there you go. You got it there with that. There. Man, yeah, that's fun. Look at that. So we do have oil pressure, believe it or not. We got the HVAC box back in. 
And sort of, I like, I like how they do this on the first gen here, is you can have the top of the dash in and still be able to pull this out the bottom. So I was able to get this back in earlier, and I got it bolted back in or screwed back in and bolted. I got a, there's a couple of these, actually apparently lost them, so I got a couple to do. I got half of them in up there, which is enough for now, but... I uh, got the vacuum lines back in. This is how they go. I had to refer to earlier uh, footage I took of this. And we got the two that go out. And then we got the this that goes back into that. And to put the back, uh, box back in, this is an 11 millimeter like sheet metal nut. Got one there. Got one there, got one directly below it, and we got one back there. Then I got the heater core lines back in. I still gotta put the clamps on it, looks like, but they're on. And then I got the vacuum lines coming out, and this gray one, which I've spliced here, goes into that guy for this valve. And then this one, which I've spliced, goes into the brake booster. So, and then I've got new gaskets on where the AC bolts up there. And that's it. That's it. And the A-Track box is back in. I'll go put these on real quick before I forget. Otherwise, screw on either side here. A couple of screws along the bottom here. And then I think it's one, two, three, four, five, and six across the top. And make sure you've got this guy out and be able to click him in as well as got this got these wires out of the way and then you got your speaker wire right here which I can try push back up here so I can hook the speakers up technically he up right there if I can get him anyway he's gonna come up right there see him there he is and this guy's got to be down out of the way here because he will plug in to this bar once this I can now bolt back up right here and I believe there's a there's a bracket that'll go here I've got the floor piece kind of clean back up that can get bolted back in right there I think there's, there's yeah there's a hole there and then there's another one on that side let's, let's just start wiring things up here I got the lower dash piece I can clean up and then put back in. And then I got the center bit, which bolts to that, that we can clean up and put back in. I think this goes in first, and then that bolts to this. But I'll have to verify that. We'll see. So we're making progress. It's starting to look like a van again.
you guys a little bit of a progress update here. It's looking, it's looking good. I've had some fun kind of relearning how this goes together, but hey, I think I got it somewhat close. So we got the upper lower dash in. Um, get the fuck a hornet just blew by my head. Oh, him right there. Oh, I just smashed my knees on the um, a rocker down there. Ow! God, I hate them. Um, he's buzzing around. I don't know what he's doing. Um, so we got the upper and lower dash in. We got the heater core in. Uh, we got the heater controls in. I, uh, this was broke. That hornet. Figure out where that goes. It goes up in here on the uh, cater control. So I gotta reroute him. Find the chainsaw in the background, but uh, we've got the dash in. Look at that. I gotta clean it up here, and then I'm gonna screw in the speakers here, and then uh, I'll hook the battery to it. We'll test everything, make sure it works. Everything plugged in, I didn't have any spare cables. How about that? Look at that. Alright, so I got it running here. Wiggled on the wire and got that guy going. Got all the lights on. My pressure washer has returned home. That has been on a favor for the last couple months. Uh, I got most of the ex excess crap out. Got the uh, um, rear hatch panel kind of slapped back together as much as it is. It's in three pieces. But hey, it looks better than not having it. The rear speakers work, the front speakers do not. So that's where we're at right now. I'm going to take it for a good lap now that I got the dash back in it here. So it's it pretty good. The fan's been, I've been, it's been running for a good half hour. The fan's been cycling on and off. So cooling system works. I know I need to top it off because it filled the heater core, but I uh, forgot to do that and it's full. So yeah, looks pretty good. She's charging. Um, I even got this thing dead on. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Alright, and away we go. Running good!
so today, um, I've already came in here and I scrubbed out the floor for the rear. I got all the dirt and stuff cleaned up for the most part. Because I got to start messing with the holes here and getting this patched up back here. That way I can uh, put the carpet back in. But, uh, I only got a little bit of time here today, so I've actually got a whole bunch of new door seals. So I'm going to figure this mess out and what's what. Maybe put some of these door seals in quick. Okay, so I ended up getting, it looks like, the one for the rear hatch and two for the doors. And then I also had the, uh, the inner... The guides for the uh, window. So I, I don't know if those are right there. I assume I'll put those in when I do the track. But just right on this rear one. That's in there. The old one's not that bad. I'm gonna hang on. To, I'm gonna hang on to them all. So the one that was the worst was the sliding door, which apparently I didn't. I didn't get slash they didn't have. Which doesn't necessarily make sense because it's just a piece of window I what I might do is I'll look at the measurement for the door I'll find the nicest one of the driver probably this passenger one and see if it'll fit and I'll just use it but it's also kind of probably taking shape hey this is the worst one and I don't have one for it but got the passenger one in that looks just absolutely mint except where I messed up the cut so what I did is I took some of the adhesive for this stuff and I overcut a little piece and I kind of just overlapped it on there and it's setting up on there now uh, driver's side I don't have in yet because naturally um, a pile of rust under it. So we got the old uh, uh, the fix all the rust fix here soaking on it, and then it's gonna get a little bit of prime over it, and uh, that that'll be all she wrote for it. So, but I do have a piece waiting ready to go. So that's cool. That's my task for the day, I guess. So I'm about out of time. I just replaced this guy with a, a nice used one I found off one of those first gens at the scrapyard a couple months ago, last winter. So that looks a little nicer. Let's see how this door seals. Hopefully. Yeah, look at that. That should, uh, that should seal nice. Got to do the same on the other side. Cause, yeah, this one's just all tore up and ripped, and that was hanging. Didn't look very good. So, here we go. So, I got this resealed, and I got everything back together, right? Well, I wanted to see if this R134A conversion still worked. And, uh, making a little bit of racket, but I, I added the refrigerant to it. And that compressor clutch is spinning. Oops, smack you on the door. And this AC is blowing ice cold. This is nice. It's blowing real good. Got to set max AC, high fan, and it is blowing real nice and cold. Yeah, that's, that's nice. And the uh, AC fan and everything that I put in is working too. So that circuit to kick that fan on works, as you can see. That fan is running right there, and the rad fan is not right now because it's just idling nice and cool too. Look at that, that's a win. And it's not it's not that bad. It sounds about right for the rest of my high mileage vehicles because look at that compressor, that's probably the original compressor with 273,000 and it's uh, putting out cold air um, with 134A. So that's freaking sweet. I don't hear any leaks or see any leaks, especially where I resealed it right there. That looks all right. So, yeah, look at that. I think my electrical gremlin was literally that switch. I wiggled that switch, the lights haven't come on. It sat here for the week with the battery in it and it fired right up, didn't go dead. So, I think we're good. I think that was just, I think that's that switch and I have a new switch to put in it. Because when I was, because I bought a new switch and then I had the junkyard switch 
if I didn't trust the new switch before I found that electrical issue there. And by the time I put it back together, I had the old switch in it. And I think it's just gummy. So, like gummed up, sticky. So either it'll come out of it or I'll put the other switch back in it. But it, uh... All right. All right, we're, we're back on the 90 today. And that uh, my rust curing over here has completed. So I put the door seal in on the driver's side door, which fits good. I've got to still cut it down there. But uh, I was looking at it, I, I, what was it, two weeks ago I was working on this last, and Rock Auto lists a sliding door one, which is out of stock. But I was, anyway, but I was looking at it, and I'm like, well, that's, I had to cut these two to fit. And I'm like, well, the excess looks like it's kind of close. And so I gambled and I bought another one. And it's a perfect fit, so... I think Rock Auto's got them listed backwards. They have the sliding door ones, but they don't have the shorter driver passenger, which from a manufacturing point kind of makes sense. You just have the customer cut them to fit poorly. But uh, yeah, the driver passenger one listed on Rock Auto for a 90 Caravan is actually the rear sliding door. That's that's the fitment right there. That's That's the fitment of the old one. That's... That's precisely how the old one looked when I pulled it out, except obviously now we've got a good seal once again. So what that means is I've got new seals on both front doors, the seal on the slider, and I've got a new seal on the rear door, which means we've got all new seals for the doors on this thing. The thing we don't have is for the windows, which they sh they look fine. They should be they should be a okay. These are the ones that get wore out from opening and shutting. So that's freaking sweet. But yeah, anyway, if you need to buy the door seals for your 90 Caravan, or 89, 84 through 90-ish, the rear slider will fit all of them. You just have to cut the front, or the driver passenger will fit all of them. You just have to cut the front two to fit. And ironically, the rear one fits just fine. I think they've got it listed wrong in Rock Auto. <laughs>
So update on the floor. Pretty much all the small stuff has been dealt with pretty well. I just keep coming back and I just keep spraying over it with this spray bottle. Um, big improvement like this, like see like that, and it's eating all the rust away. All of these look pretty good now. That one could use a little more. One of the bigger spots is a little rough, but this one's starting to come around. Yeah, I just keep coming back every half hour or so, spraying down. Otherwise, that's what the carpet looks like today. I think I've done three rounds of vacuum, two rounds of pressure wash, two rounds of soap. It's better. Um, it's more uniform in color. It, it's been bleached at some point in its life. You can see here the one spot it didn't get hit with bleach was where the um, like the pull-out drawer was under the uh, passenger seat. Otherwise, everything else got hit pretty good and where like the trim was. So I don't know if they use like a bleach cleaner at some point or, or what. But there's a lot of brown there that still needs to come out. A little bit of staining in here and then the center bit. Otherwise, it kept coming out like pitch black, and it turned out that this, uh, the foam matting underneath was just absolutely just caked or soaked in like whatever, I don't know what, coffee, it's like somebody spilled a pot of coffee on it. So I ended up pulling that off because I have brand new carpet matting in a roll downstairs in storage, and it comes off in three pieces. Um, Whoever glued the this middle piece down in the assembly line used way too much glue. I, I got those two off just fine. This one was fighting me and fighting me and fighting me. But what I'll do is I'll lay the new mat out and I'll lay these over top and use them as templates and I'll cut the new mat to fit and I'll, I'll glue it on to the back side of that carpet once I'm done with it. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soap it down again today. I think I'll, I'll pressure wash it. And then I will extract it and let it dry out here in the sun while I get the mat from downstairs. And I'll come out and I'll cut that up. Then the carpet will be ready and then I can roll that up until I'm done with the floor. Hey, it'll be better than it was. It's definitely better. Way, way better. There's some staining here still, but it's much more uniform. And like the front bit, that'll have floor mats. I think I got floor mats for the middle and the rear here. I don't know if I got a floor mat for that, but it's all right. It'll be uniform in color and it won't smell. That's, the, that's my goal here. I'll put you back on the tripod. We're gonna get back to work on this. We're gonna soak it down with the pressure washer real quick. And then I'm going to put a layer of soap on it. And uh, then we'll hit it with the pressure washer again.